Hello, and welcome to our session with the fellows from the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. I'm Peter Lachman. I work in Ireland and was formerly with ISPA. And I've been working together with the Safety Foundation to look at um, how we can spread the learning around the world and run a program for fellows uh, in different countries. So we're very fortunate to be at this session, which we're calling Lessons from the Fellows. And it's really asking our four fellows to uh, highlight some of the challenges that they have in healthcare uh, in their different countries. They'll each introduce themselves, but I can tell you where they're from. Uh, Louise is from Mexico, Ebi is from Nigeria, Elizabeth is from Uganda, and Samara is from Jordan. Now, they all come with a different perspective on what it is like to provide safe care within their own country. And as you can imagine, each of the countries are very different and they all have different challenges, but a common theme. The importance of these four fellows is that they are looking at how in their own countries, they can develop a safer system. So over the next uh, few minutes, we're gonna have each of the fellows uh, give a short brief uh, background to where they work, the kind of work they're doing, and what they see as the biggest challenges in their area. Uh, what I'd like you to do is really think about this in the context of the WHO uh, Global Action Plan, which I'll be referring to at the end, because uh, what we really like to think about is that as we're in this decade of patient safety, we try to find ways we can actionable uh, action all the things that we're supposed to do. Uh, there's a lot of theory, and from the fellows, you'll hear the challenges that they face and that they have to do as they go about their daily work and as they go about their work as champions for patient safety. So I leave it to them, and I hope you enjoy the next 20 minutes of listening to the fellows. I'll see you after that. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Okoye Ibikapaye. I work with the Biosystems Ministry of Health. I'm a physician, um, a fellow of the International Society for Quality and Healthcare, and one of the healthcare safety fellows of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. My interest and passion in patient safety and healthcare quality improvement was um, aroused when I made my first contact with the International Society for Quality in Healthcare. And since then, I have developed this passion and followed this career pathway and trajectory to enhance patient safety and quality improvement in healthcare. Nigeria, like every other country, is a party to the Global Patient Safety Action Plan 2021 to 2030. And the implementation of this action plan has been faced with a whole lot of challenges and cutting across the three, the seven strategic objectives of this action plan you can see that along all these objectives, there has been key challenges, starting from the issue of the policies towards elimination of harm that is lacking in Nigeria. Currently, there is no patient safety policy that is adopted and implemented across all healthcare institutions and healthcare facilities. So the policy environment is lacking. And then the issue of data, there is no patient safety um, directed data as regards to medical errors, no um, uh, medical error reporting systems and no data that is uniformly collected across board that speaks to the issue of medical errors that provides the evidence for action. In terms of also the capacity building and institutional learning, there is presently no patient safety curriculum that is implemented across board that healthcare manpower training institutions are um, enforcing and enhancing and implementing. So learning of patient safety as an issue is lacking and needs a lot of improvement. And then you come across the issues around the patient safety engagement and um, advisory boards. There is no currently no healthcare institution and healthcare facility where you will have the patient safety 
adversary board. Patients and families are not properly engaged, not properly involved in the healthcare, and the lack of advocacy from our patients and our families to enhance and ensure that issues of patient safety are addressed. And even where there are complaints and there their harm is involved, it is still an issue. Who, who to call, who to, uh, to um, report to, and then who will enforce what is required in enhancing safety of our patient. There's still a lot about the blame culture. So the culture environment is also lacking, is more of a blame culture. Transparency is lacking. So because of the fear of punishment and the fear of repercussions, healthcare professionals have not achieved that dynamics of where there's open disclosure of harm and then communication uh, resolution of issues of harm. So a lot needs, needs to be done. The research environment around patient safety is also still lacking. There's no much healthcare research in terms of improvement of harm being done and elimination of harm being done. How organizations, our healthcare institutions are still yet to adopt the high reliability uh, systems of healthcare organizations. So learning a cue from the healthcare, um, the aviation industry, the preoccupation of failure, and then learning systems to ensure that um, patient safety is a core of our practice is still la lacking. Clinical practices processes are yet to adopt safety as a domain where you have healthcare safety officers and risk managers is still lacking. A lot needs to be done and I'm sure we'll improve. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Elizabeth Igaga. I am an anesthesiologist from Uganda. Um, I work with Makeri University and the Uganda Heart Institute and I am one of the inaugural fellows of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation Healthcare Safety Fellowship. I'm um, privileged today to speak about the challenges implementing um, the WHO Global Patient Safety Action Plan in my country. And I'd just like to kick it off by saying the concept of patient safety is a relatively new concept in my country. Um, you know, I basically have had to explain to everyone what patient safety is and why I am doing it as a fellowship and why it is important. And that just tells you that, you know, some of the stakeholders are not aware that we actually have a patient safety problem that needs to be solved. So I think that that is one of the, one of the problems with implementation because because it's relatively new and no one really knows, it's not given as much priority as it deserves. Um, there's also a tendency to sort of lean towards the policy of a greater good, which basically means that if we had to trade off between ensuring that there's access to healthcare as opposed to access to to ensuring that the healthcare that is being accessed is safe, then um, we're going to ensure that a lot more people um, access healthcare at the cost of, you know, ensuring safety. Um, this happens because the system that we work in is a low resource setting. And therefore, because of the limited resources, it is important to prioritize and in prioritizing sometimes, again, patient safety is not given as much priority as it deserves. Um, I also believe that our systems are significantly multifaceted and therefore in that regard, they're not robust enough to deal with some of the challenges that come with implementing um, or the requirements that come with implementing the Global Patient Safety Action Plan. Um, over time, I am hoping that um, the importance of patient safety will be recognized and there will be space and room for us to be able to actually um, embed the action plan within the system so that it becomes part of the system and not something that we're trying to implement from the outside in. Um, those challenges notwithstanding, I believe that we have made great strides as a country. Um, 
Personally, I advocate for perioperative safety. Um, we now have multiple training sessions and we're able to support um, a lot of the health workers, both virtually and physically, and help them with scaling, scaling up their um, capacity, improving their skills, being able to provide consultation services for them when it's necessary, and um, providing you know, technical advice as and when the stakeholders ask for it and also advocating for them to be able to involve us in the decision-making process. So I believe that while there are challenges in um, implementing the safety action plan, um, this is going to get better and easier to do as we go. Um, thank you for listening to me. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a true pleasure to be joining you today in this great event. My name is Samar Khalid Hassan from Jordan. I'm a pharmacist, a quality professional, and a fellow at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. It's truly an honor to be presenting to you um, and sharing with you Jordan's experience in patient safety implementation. So these are um, the things that I'm going to quickly run through. Uh, I will provide a snapshot of Jordan's health system, discuss challenges and barriers to patient safety implementation, present country experience, and talk about actions needed for moving forward. So Jordan is a small country in the eastern Mediterranean region with limited natural resources and quite a diverse health uh, sector. We have public, private, and nonprofit sectors. The public sector um, takes a large chunk of the service. The Ministry of Health is both a regulator and a service provider alongside um, military institutions and teaching institutions. Uh, we have um, an active private sector, especially in outpatient and hospitals. We have also a big and active nonprofit sector. Now, Jordan population has increased rapidly within the past few decades. Uh, since Jordan is the second host country with the largest number of refugees per capita, with over 2 million Palestinian refugees and 1.36 million Syrian refugees. As you can see, there's, um, there was not a gradual nor systematic uh, growth in the population. But it was um, driven by the political environment of the region. Nevertheless, Jordan maintained um, a good indicator on uh, many um, levels uh, in comparison to the MENA uh, average and the upper middle income uh, countries average. Um, with matters related to the health expenditure, out-of-pocket expenditure, mortality, universal health coverage, and capacity and service capacity. Now, as you can see from the latest Global Health Security Index, Jordan performed well in the rapid response category and performed poorly uh, in the prevention category, which needs to be addressed and improved for the future. Despite the good indicator, we still have many challenges that affect uh, and impact uh, quality and patient safety across the different component of health system. Um, when it comes to demography, as I mentioned earlier, we have high uh, rates of natural population growth, as well as high rates of forced migration. Um, we have low GDP growth rate and high uh, public debt ratio. Um, when it comes to governance, um, we have excellent, many excellent institutions uh, that works towards improving quality and patient safety, syndicates, associations, national councils, we have strong GFDA and recently developed CDC. But what we lack is the coordination and we can see weak governance structure across um, the health uh, system. We have good insurance. However, we see people that are still left out um, with financing, we have poor uh, cost containment strategies. Um, we see weak utilization and by bypassing of primary healthcare and overburdened secondary healthcare that is challenged with limited bit capacity and the migration and brain drain of qualified health workforce. Now, despite existing challenges, uh, we haven't been standing still. Uh, there were many efforts uh, taking place to improve and to uh, drive this patient safety implementation. On the regulatory level, we have developed medical liability law, 
a health professional license renewal bylaw and government uh, strategies. Um, many governmental strategies have patient safety as a core component and a main goal, including Health Vision 2025, a National Health Sector Strategy, Human Resource for Health Strategy, and Health Sector um, Reform uh, Plan. Um, as another approach to improve and address the existing challenges, um, there is um, the National Accreditation Council that was established as a public-private uh, partnership. We're very proud to have uh, HCEC in Jordan that is um, a national accreditation body co-owned by the government and the private sector. It was initially designed to be an accreditation arm, setting standards, uh, evaluating health institutions and awarding accreditation, but it had grown a, into a larger role to be an enabling arm um, for establishing patient safety goals, capacity building, training, and playing um, a big role in advocacy and uh, policy setting and support. Uh, in, when it comes to health information system, in, in line with the global direction, Jordan has established a national action plan to combat antimicrobial resistance and was uh, one of the first uh, countries in the region to participate in global antimicrobial resistance surveillance system. We've also established maternal mortality surveillance and response system, developed electronic records, and expanded on telehealth and telemedicine experience, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. The WHO Global Patient Safety Action Plan provides a roadmap and a framework to uh, establish patient safety practices and to build a patient safety culture across the different levels of the uh, health system. And it will uh, really benefit Jordan in, in uh, guiding the efforts towards uh, patient safety practices and building uh, the right uh, culture moving forward. So in order to translate the, the framework into uh, actions on the ground, we need first to admit and recognize existing gaps, and then invest in enabling factors that will help us in bridging those gaps. So first, we do acknowledge that we have, we, we don't have a national patient safety strategy and framework. We have data gaps and lack of clear measurement of safety and quality, lack of patient um, and family engagement, uh, and weak governance and coordination across the different stakeholders. Now, but we also have many enabling factors that can help us um, tackle those gaps. Uh, we have leadership commitment, donor support, um, World Health Organization technical tools and global direction, national health sector reform strategy, public-private partnerships, strategies toward decentralization, and also a strong national accreditation body. So hopefully we will be able to invest in those enabling factors uh, in order to tackle the existing gaps, to translate the framework into actions on the ground uh, with the aim of eliminating avoidable harm in healthcare. Um, so I'm looking forward to learn from other countries' experiences. Thank you for your time and thank you for giving me the platform. Good morning, my name is Luis Torres Torija, fellow of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. I'm from Mexico and I will share the commitment to ensure patient safety and implement the activities of the Global Patient Safety Action Plan in my country in order to eliminate avoidable harm in healthcare. Some of the main activities that have been carried out are the development of healthcare standards and metrics to help implement safer processes. Currently, some are being revised in order to be more precise and user-friendly. The certification process of healthcare organizations in Mexico is expedited and promoted by the Consejo de Salud General, organisms with normative, consultative, and executive functions in Mexico. The World Patient Safety Day is celebrated annually since its inception in 2019 with the participation of political leadership and other relevant stakeholders where awards are given to healthcare institutions. And also there's an illumination of several buildings in Orange to create awareness in the Mexican society. These are really some of the highlights of the Patient Safety Day events. 
High reliability systems are based on transparency, openness, no blame culture, and good governance. Even though there is more room to improve in this regard, in the segments of the Mexican health system, the public, private, and social security segments, efforts to improve communication and collaboration between health organizations have been made from national and state committees related to quality and patient safety as well as specific topics such as pharmacovigilance and the reduction of infections that allow the sharing of good practices, as well as transparency in information to implement the strategies to continue the development of a safety culture. Through the National Patient Safety Model that was approved in 2009, which objective is to ensure the safety of clinical processes, health organizations have an evidence-based model that allows them to have a guide to reduce variability by the standardization of the best practices, as well as having tools for improvement, measurement, and monitorization of the actions. Similarly, there are established systems to ensure, for example, the infection prevention, the control and antimicrobial resistance, the safety of medical devices, and medication, among others information and education to patients and families regarding health-related matters are given by staff of relevant healthcare institutions. This is planned to improve engagement of patients and their families in the development of policies and programs, as well as learning from patient experiences for safety improvement. In the country, programs on healthcare quality and safety are conducted by academic and or, on government organizations like the Consejo de Salud General. A quality in clinical care residence program has been in Mexico for more than 15 years by the Faculty of Medicine of the Tecnológico Monterrey and the Secretary of Health of Nuevo León and has been reinforced by the involvement of other organizations such as the Instituto Mexicano de Seguridad Social the main provider of care in the social security segment in the country, and also by the states of Mexico City and Guanajuato, as well as private institutions such as the Christos Mugersa Group, increasing the number of opportunities for physicians who seek to develop in these subjects. A stakeholders' involvement is happening at national and institutional level to ensure patient safety. Mexico Health Care Organizations works with patient safety networks and cross geographical initiatives, including the WHO Global Patient Safety Network and the Patient Safety Movement Foundation in aims to improve patient safety culture in my country. In Mexico, we still have a lot of room to improve, but it is clear the importance to continue the collaboration between the stakeholders and the alienation of the incentives in all the levels of care to bring better quality and safety for our patients. Thank you. Hello, I'm back uh, to think about some of the issues that were raised by our fellows and uh, to understand what the commonalities are. What I'm going to do is uh, refer you to the WHO checklist, uh, which is um, rather a framework, I'd say, for action uh, from the Global Action Plan. And each of our fellows in some kind of way has shown uh, how important it is to take a systems approach to solving the problems in their organization or in their country. Uh, both of, uh, all of them have high aspirations for where they work. Uh, if you think of the issues in Uganda, where there hasn't been a patient safety movement as such, or in Nigeria where it has been fragmented and has not responded well to um, adverse events, or to uh, Mexico, in which they want to really change the way people think, the culture, and again to Jordan, where they're thinking about how, how patient safety can be nationwide in different forms. Now, all of these have the same approach. You'll see on the framework, that there are seven uh, key areas that have been highlighted at WHO. Quite fortunately, it doesn't talk about safety one or safety two, it talks about safety because within this is the theory of, of safety one, safety two, 
and be responding to uh, things that go wrong as well as learning from things that work very well. So in essence, all of our fellows required their, their organizations and their countries to have policies to eliminate avoidable harm. What they really are looking at is developing reliable systems, systems that deliver what they're supposed to deliver all the time. And I really refer to this one on this framework in point 2.3, which talks about leadership capacity. And the reason why I'm concentrating on that one right now is because this is what the Patient Safety Movement Foundation um, uh, program is for the fellows. It's about developing leaders in countries that require leaders. Now we work in the upper income countries and we have many people who've been involved in patient safety over time. But if you listen to Elizabeth from Uganda, she's really saying that she's a pioneer in her country as is Ebi, Louis and Samar in each of their own countries. And we are here to support them so they can grow into leaders and have a worldwide network of leaders in patient safety. What they're trying to do is develop safe clinical processes and this is very important because without safe clinical processes, for example, in the ER, uh, in, the, uh, in, uh, in the operating rooms in Uganda or in, in, um, in antimicrobial stewardship in uh, Jordan, without these processes, you cannot have safety. And then finally, they're looking at how they can make this much wider. Uh, you heard about the importance of learning from adverse events, as, the, as Ebi said in Nigeria, the information and the risk and management, but overall they need partnerships as Luis has, has, has spoken about. So when you think about this framework, we are trying to show you that with our fellows, this framework in some small way in different countries is being put into action. They've chosen different parts of this framework ready to make it real for where they work and where possible, to take it up at a regional and a national scale. So the Patient Safety Movement Foundation has really started on a good way with these four fellows to start a program that can build leaders around the world. And we're hoping to take this forward as we develop the program. And we'd like your support in helping these leaders become the leaders of the future for patient safety. If you have any queries, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks very much. And I'm Peter Lachman from uh, the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland, working with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. Thank you. Soy licenciada en enfermería y obstetricia en el Hospital Materno Infantil de Irapuato donde trabajamos todos los días desarrollando diversas acciones con el objetivo de reducir y prevenir la aparición de errores durante la atención médica para proporcionar servicios de salud de manera oportuna, equitativa, integrada y eficiente, además de calidad y con calidez. En el Hospital Materno Infantil de Irapuato, alzamos la voz por la seguridad del paciente. Hola, soy la doctora Regina, soy gestora de calidad y el Hospital de Especialidades Pediátrico León, siempre comprometido con la seguridad del paciente, así como con la atención médica de calidad. El hospital se encuentra inscrito desde enero del año 2021 en la Fundación del Movimiento de Seguridad del Paciente, con el reto Manejo de Hemoderivados. Convencidos firmemente de que prácticas seguras como la hemovigilancia antes, durante y después de cada administración de algún hemoderivado y la aplicación de barreras de seguridad en cada uno de nuestros procesos nos permitirá detectar incidentes y reacciones adversas que pudieran ocasionar daño a nuestros pequeños pacientes, obteniendo así un aprendizaje basado en la mejora. Hola, les saludo cordialmente, soy el doctor Daniel Díaz, Secretario de Salud del Estado de Guanajuato. En nuestra institución la calidad en la atención médica es una línea estratégica. Tenemos el firme compromiso de garantizar la seguridad de nuestras y nuestros pacientes. Además de las acreditaciones y certificaciones en nuestras unidades médicas, en el año 2020 decidimos ir por más, seguir avanzando en el camino hacia la excelencia. Nos sumamos al movimiento por la seguridad del paciente y registramos a tres de nuestros hospitales. Fue así como en el año 2021 dos de ellos obtuvieron el distintivo HRO, que significa Organizaciones de Alta Confiabilidad. La transparencia y transferencia del conocimiento fueron las principales vías 
para convertirnos en una organización de alta confiabilidad. Esto se logró a través de un mejor diseño de procesos y de construir una cultura de la confiabilidad y la calidad al mismo tiempo. Aunque nuestro impulso para convertirnos en una institución HRO se originó en la seguridad, nos hemos dado cuenta de que este trabajo mejora nuestro desempeño en todos los procesos que implementamos en la mayoría de nuestras unidades. Por su atención, muchísimas gracias. Reciban un cordial saludo. Guanajuato, Grandeza de México, Gobierno del Estado.